Um, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the task force. My name is Betsy Casey. I am the program director of Building Hope Summit County. It is a nonprofit uh, founded in 2016 to create a more coordinated, effective, and responsive mental health system in Summit County, Colorado. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my testimony today. Building Hope has <coughs> nine program areas uh, created to um, seeking to improve residents' mental health uh, and our system in Summit County. One of them is a scholarship program, and I will be sending you guys, uh, I have a couple of um, uh, associated documents um, that I will be emailing out for your review. Um, the Building Hope Scholarship Program was launched in July of 2017. It was created to ensure that no Summit County resident was denied access to care due to a financial barrier. Since the program's inception, the program has provided 781 unique scholarships and paid for over $300,000 worth of care for Summit County residents alone. The program was designed in a way to always be a pair of last resort with insurance navigation integrated into the screening process. Our staff and issuing sites undergo training to ensure that whenever possible, people are connected to mental health care through an established pair source first. <clears throat> to date, Summit County experiences among the highest insurance premiums in the nation. Despite having a perfectly good pair source and paying some of the highest premiums in the nation, 54% of scholarship recipients of our Building Hope Scholarship recipients have insurance and cannot utilize their insurance for a myriad of baffling reasons. I will be outlining some of those in a moment. We meticulously collect data on all scholarship recipients, including type of insurance and barrier they are experiencing to utilizing their insurance. As a small startup nonprofit, it is not only unrealistic for us to continue to pay for residents care when they have insurance, but we are continually shocked at the barriers that our clients face on a daily basis when attempting to use their coverage. To, uh, to put it into perspective, an, ad, an average scholarship and insurance navigation phone call takes anywhere from 20 to 60 minutes, teaching the resident about the many hoops that they must jump through in order to utilize their payer source. And approximately 75% uh, of, of one FTE, one full-time employee, is devoted solely to this work. Um, chart three indicates, sorry, you guys don't have chart three indicates, the barriers scholarship recipients face when trying to utilize their insurance. Uh, we've collected data on 454 recipients, which I will share with you. Um, so again, I would like to point out uh, how ridiculous it is that 54% of our recipients are receiving the scholarship when they have a perfectly good pair source. So let's talk about barriers. Fit and selecting a therapist. In order to be a client-centered model of care, empowering somebody with the choices of who they can work with is an important part of the process when getting connected, when getting connected to care. Most of our scholarship recipients have never sought mental health care, so when they finally take the brave step to select a therapist that looks like it could be a good fit and obtain the same values, it can be a really positive moment. Most of the time, we have to tell them that the provider that they've selected does not take their insurance. We tell them that they have to work with the provider that is selected for them. We send them to the pre-selected provider of their insurance, and 72% of the time, those people call back because that provider was not a good fit for them. For those of you who are unaware how therapy works, um, therapy is effective because of the positive relationship formed between a clinician and client. And in order for therapy to be effective in any way, shape, or form, there has to be a good fit. Um, therapy is not effective because of treatment modality, but again, because of the positive relationship that develops between the client and the clinician. This is not the same as a physical health care provider. If you don't like your doctor, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to affect your care that much. If you don't like your therapist, you are going to get zero work done. So when we try to connect somebody to care and they go to meet with one or two of the providers on their network and can't seem to develop a relationship, does that just mean that they're out of luck? No. Building Hope program, uh, the Building Hope program follows the science that says that they should have they, that they should have the ability to connect with someone that works for them, and to really follow that best practices that the fit is the most important uh, thing. Many times this can take a few a few visits and a few providers, and the horrible network inadequacies um, make this virtually impossible for people in Summit County. Um, network in network inadequacies. Uh, this is an yet another barrier. 17% of providers in Summit County currently accept insurance. 
This number is very scary for us when we are trying to get somebody connected to care. The likelihood that those individuals currently have openings is almost zero. I built this program and have personally approved every additional session request uh, that we can for, and for acute cases, high needs and complex trauma, we usually approve twice the sessions of, of regular recipients, but our program can only sustain so much. I cannot tell you how many cases I have seen like children with complex trauma, men and women struggling with addiction and using therapy to remain sober since we lack formal treatment programs up in Summit County, suicidal teens, mothers and fathers with major depressive disorder trying to get well for their families, individuals desperately needing care, all of them who have a perfectly good payer source they cannot use. The provider uh, will not accept their payer source because of tedious paperwork requirements, reimbursement rates that are completely unsustainable, and getting reimbursed sometimes up to eight months after care. One provider was so upset wanting to support one of her families, but was stuck between either not working with this family or receiving a $35 reimbursement rate from UMR. $35 for her 60 hour or 60 minute session. Um, and that's a licensed credentialed, uh, a licensed professional counselor. Uh, I understand and I can tell you, uh, excuse me, I understand that I can tell a family to call the Ombudsman office and file a complaint, but do you know what that sounds like? Your child is suicidal and you can call this number and file a complaint. It is incredibly difficult to tell that to a family. I go home at night and wonder where our families are, how our residents are making it work. And I believe that you all believe in that we're here today because mental health is not a luxury. Mental health care is not a luxury. This is an absolute necessity and I'm wondering what our friends are doing at the state level to hold insurance companies accountable and make violations like these held up in a court of law. What are we doing with insurance companies about network inadequacies? Um, it's shocking to me that they can get away with listing a provider on their panel who is deceased, dead. We actually had two providers who were actively listed who had died, many of them who have moved away. Or insurance companies have several providers list listed and they are all completely unavailable. Um, also, do you know what it takes to get a provision to then see an, excuse me, do you know what it takes to then get a provision to see an out-of-network provider. It takes knowledge that you can even do that. Getting on the phone, negotiating with someone from the insurance company, trying to explain yourself and explain why you could not get care with the in-network provider. For those of you who know what it's like to have a mental health challenge or even a crisis, a person's ability for ration, logic, and reason is literally taken offline because their mind is compromised. So you're asking someone to navigate a system where they have no, no previous ability to be able to do that when their brains or their mental faculties are offline. Sure, Betsy, you have about 30 seconds. Oh, great, okay. Um, essentially, I wanted to talk to you guys today a little bit about um, what we're all doing to hold insurance companies accountable and what is happening in order for those processes to happen. Um, I, Building Hope is currently in the process of looking at some innovative strategies um, to provide billing management platforms and actually use grant funded billing, uh, billing management FTE and hire that, a grant funded position to be able to get more uh, panelist credentialed. Also, I just wanted to take a moment to say that I currently have insurance and I pay $550 out of pocket to pay every single month for my own mental health care because I was not able to find the right fit with a therapist who could be able to deal with complex trauma. So this is not only something that I advocate for our own programs, but um, something that I personally also experience uh, today. And I am happy to also send uh, you guys the documents um, so that you guys can take a look at um, the way that we have uh, collected our data and how we remain to do so. I um, am very grateful for the opportunity to be able to share with you guys, and if you have any questions, um, I believe Summer has my information. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me.